Welcome, welcome to Unhinge with the Door Dork, where door hardware nerds get together to knock and slam on different door fells. We learn, we laugh, and sometimes we cry, but most importantly, we have fun while we dork out on some doors and we learn a little bit as we go along the way. Today, we do have a very special nerd joining us. Hopefully, Rick, it's okay that I call you a nerd. Rick Streifel, it's so glad to have you on the show. Why don't you hop on and say hello and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do, and maybe offer us a fun fact. Okay. My name's Rick. I worked for Al Scott Lock and Safe for 41 years. I started when I was 25. Currently, we're the biggest locksmith company in BC, Canada, with eight service vans, I believe, and three stores. I operate semi-retired as the service manager, so I get to deal with customer complaints and people that make mistakes and all that sort of stuff. And I look after the complicated master keying. We do mostly institutional government stuff. We work through the entire process province of BC. I've been to tiny little towns like Smithers and places like that all over Vancouver Island. So I go where I need to go. So 41 years with the company. I started when my son was one month old. My son is now 41 years old and he is one of our top guys in our shops. So he can work at any shop and he rolls around and does a holiday relief, vacation relief, sick days, things like that. So he's our floater that can kind of handle anything. That's awesome. uh, fun. Fun fact. I like tech stuff. I'm a ham radio operator and like like computers and all kinds of geeky stuff like that. That's really cool. I know the more you know, the more that you don't know much about that. Like you can really get deep yeah. into that side of the tech world, right? Oh yeah, I can pick up a zillion radios just beside me here. Here's another one. <laughs> covered. In, my desk is covered in radios. Well then, Rick, I think you're in the right spot. I think you are a, a nerd at heart, right? And so oh, yeah. welcome. Thanks for joining us. And I love hearing that your son has taken up the family business, you know, like joined the there you go. joined into the industry. And and what a legacy. Wow. That's a long time in the industry. Thank you for your service. I'm sure you have seen it all and I'm sure we'll see some of it today. So, you know, as far as seeing it all, you know what they say, if you build something that's idiot proof, they'll just build a bitter idiot. <laughs> and that's proven true more times than not. Still surprised today. I'm sure. And the humans <laughs> never cease to surprise me with their yeah. level of creativity. I went to repair a bank vault and the teller who I was helping set the combination was telling me, I was doing it wrong. You know, you're the one that screwed it up. Why are you telling me I'm the one that's making a mistake here? Anyway, people are different. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't you don't know what you're doing. You're doing it wrong. Let me let me take it yeah. from this. <laughs> well, welcome, Rick. Thanks for joining us on this show. Appreciate you hopping on and sharing some of that experience with us. Yeah, my um, pleasure. You, you know her, you love her. This is Mia Merrill. Why don't you hop on and say hello? And I think you've got a fun fact as well. I do. So welcome to this episode. And Rick, thanks for joining us. And I love multi generational door hardware nerd family. So these stories are just my favorite in the industry. So if anybody else has them to share, I love to hear them. My fun fact, and it's the end of Benji and my birthday month, we're gonna have a probably a special merch drop for our two year door hardware nerd anniversary. So stay tuned in July. And that's all I'm gonna say. But also okay. happy birthday, Benji. <laughs> happy birthday, Mia. I can't believe in almost two years. Almost. Yeah. One more Crazy. month. Well, and it's our actual actual birthday not the door hardware nerds birthday but yes, that's yes. Also, right like <laughs> right may is when we actually have our birthdays and then july is door hardware nerd anniversary so busy busy couple of months for us it's the summer for you <laughs> Yeah. Well, speaking of birthdays, I guess my fun fact is dealing with my birthday, the actual birthday. So I was a very large baby. I was just over 10 pounds. And so that was a healthy, healthy baby. And the night I came home from the hospital, I actually slept the whole night through. My mom woke up in a sheer panic seeing that it was morning and thought I was dead. And nope, I was just like this fat little baby curled up in a ball and just slept through the whole night. You should apologize to your mother regularly for that birthday. <laughs> I should. She probably... <laughs> well, here, here's here's the thing. My older brother was actually 11 pounds. And so he kind of cleared the way for the rest of us to come. Yeah. So. <laughs> how long did it take your mother to learn how to walk after that? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> 
I think she was, she like just went with it. I don't think there was that much of a recovery. Crazy. Anywho. (laughs) So for those who don't know how Unhinged works, I will share my screen. We'll throw up a couple of door fill installation code violations. Wow, that was just one string of what we look at. And today, Rick actually shared a couple photos with us, which is always exciting because then we get a little bit of insight from the inside job, you know? So let me share my screen and we'll hop in there. Does that sound good? Sure. You guys ready? Are we ever? Yeah. So this, believe it or not, is at the Vancouver International Airport. What? And <laughs> yes. I got called by, this is a air cargo company, and they called me to come and make the door code again. Because as you can see, it's got an exit sign on it, and you can also see the hasp and padlock on the door. And oddly enough, just prior to them calling me, the fire department came through and did their fire inspection and said absolutely nothing about this door. What? <laughs> They didn't say anything about it? They didn't say anything about this door at all. The complaint came from the customs people, because this is a customs bonded warehouse, and the customs officers that were coming to inspect cargo and stuff said they had to fix the door. Wow. That's scary in a couple different ways. Yes. So just for everyone watching, don't be afraid to bring up a concern. It might not be your jurisdiction. It may not be there, but lives are in danger. So make sure- you're And if you're standing on this side of the door- your life is at stake because you got yeah. no way to, absolutely and yeah. you know chances are chances are right i hate I hate using that 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 nothing will happen but if something does happen this is your escape route and so if you see something say something i think that's a saying right yep <laughs> Yeah, we should probably bring that into the openings industry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's at an airport, right? Isn't that where they like announce it on the intercom? If you see something, say something, right? Yeah. I mean, the exit sign is not even mounted over the exit either. Well, there's a window above it. So it's actually, it's code compliant in Canada to put the sign beside the door under these circumstances. Because if uh, they put oh, it really? above the sky, if they put it above the door light, they call it a door light. Um, if they put it there, it would be too high. So they're allowed to put it beside. Okay. But I don't think All they're right. allowed to put the window window above it like that anymore because you know codes change right interesting thing about canada is we have a federal building code we have a provincial building code and we have municipal building code and you i don't know if you guys do that in the u.s but building codes in vancouver are different than they are in a suburb like richmond where this would occur and this is actually on federal ground so it's got its own little version of voodoo so we have a code corner with katie episode where we had joe meyer on and they talked about the different codes in the different regions of canada so if anybody out there is watching from Canada and you're still confused about the codes, you can go check that out. Maybe I'll put a link below. And there's a good reason why you're confused about the codes because the codes <laughs> are confusing in Canada. For example, in the city of Richmond, if you want to put a mag lock on a door, you just go and put the mag lock on the door. But Vancouver doesn't like mag locks because the fire department doesn't like them for some reason. So if you want to put a mag lock on a door in Vancouver, you have to have a $3,000 engineering study approving it before you can put it on. Wow. Yeah. And that doesn't make it cost effective anymore. Right. And that's why they did it, because they don't like maglocks in Vancouver. Hmm. I get it. Like maglocks have their place. But for the most part, that's usually the one of the last things I will recommend. And it's only if yeah. there's like nothing else that you can do on that door. Well, they, they saw a lot of heavy duty use early on in maglocks because of time control access. So they didn't have to have a security guard or walk around and lock the door at night, things like that. But they also ran into problems with residual magnetism in the lock. So the door would be unlocked, but there would still be some resistance to push the door open, right? Uh, because of, yeah. because of residual magnetism in the core. So what can I tell you? Yeah. Whenever I look at doors like this, I always picture like if something happened, how would I navigate to try to get through all this? And no, this is just a death trap. People would be trying to escape out this way. And if they're not tripping over the debris and tires, there's for some strange reason, there's tires in the way. It has like a pallet stacked up there and the padlock on the exit. That's oh, it's a, a, it's a disaster waiting to happen. There's no question. Yeah. I think those are forklift tires, but that actually might be somebody's cargo now that I think of it because of the labeling on it so that might be somebody's cargo that's sitting waiting to go through the bonding process because like i said this is a customs bonded area they actually got upset when i took the picture really yeah oh, because yeah. it's showing people's yeah. yeah yeah i mean i don't know what information you could steal from this there's there's nothing there really <laughs> yeah. and even so like there should be a clear and marked off staging area for stuff like that not in the path of egress right <laughs> right and you know if you're going to do something stupid like this you deserve a little bit of public humiliation in my opinion yes yeah i don't know what it looks like on the sides but i 
feel like, you know, maybe some shelving to either side of the store. Yeah, there could be a lot of things that you could do. I mean, you can see there's an electrical box near the fire alarm pole station that doesn't have a cover on it and there's wiring in it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that right there, yeah. It was pretty ugly. Yeah. That's a good way to wake yourself up in the morning right there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for a very short period of time, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But at least it looks like a sergeant parallel arm door closer is installed correctly. Uh, although yeah. the, arm, the arm doesn't look quite parallel at the top, but it's at least they did that right. Yeah, no, that's not too shabby. We've definitely seen worse on this show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> although I don't I don't think the lock set, it's hard to see the lock set. Does it match? Does the, Do the finishes match? Or yeah, it was 626 finish. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe the, yeah, the black of the palette in front of it made it look more. Yeah, it's kind of hard to spot. Yeah, 610, right? <laughs> okay, any other last comments before we give this a knocking score? Nope. <laughs> This is pretty bad. I'll go ahead and say it. This is probably a 10 in my book because, I mean, it was maybe just the padlock. It could be a conversation, but this is obviously deep into the system where people are just, they're used to dumping things right here. Yep. Yeah. From a life safety perspective, I'd have to say it's an 11, Yeah. right? <laughs> because it's a warehouse and it's not a company warehouse, it's a shipping warehouse. So you really don't know what's in here because you don't know what's inside the packages. So you don't know the volatility of the material. So probably the odds of having to make an emergency the escape are a little higher than they were if you worked for Amazon in a Amazon warehouse, for example. And all the more reasons why, you know, you should have a clear method of egress. Oh, yeah. I didn't think yeah. about it from that standpoint, but they could be transporting hazardous materials that could, Absolutely. I don't know, like lithium batteries that explode and start a fire or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No less than 10. And all that cardboard <laughs> in there, that's just fire starting waiting to happen. It's yep. going to get hot. Okay. An 11. We've got an 11, Mia. <laughs> We've never had one of those before. <laughs> well, I mean, you'd break your neck trying to climb over the dunnage, trying to get to the door that you couldn't unlock because of the padlock. Right. Right. Yeah, you'd have to be a hardcore professional to get to the door. And even then... You'd uh, have to have a crowbar or, to get the door open. Yeah. yeah. Crowbar, I mean... And then, or and then climb over the... And then climb over the pallet. Yeah. Death trap. Okay, next one. Sure. If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, or if you have a photo to submit like Rick did today, you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com.